Hi, I thought I'd share with you a few of the ways in which I manage my fruit trees over the winter months. As well as using some vegetable oil, which can be uh, sunflower oil, on your fruit trees in order to combat the effects of caterpillars and other insects, you might also try another fruit tree wash. I'm trialling this one against bacterial and fungal infections. Um, it can also repel insects. Basically, I've got a two litre sprayer, pressure sprayer, I'm just going to try 10 drops of lavender oil and the same again with clove oil. Uh, in order to make it stick I'm using a bit of washing up liquid, a good squirt, but I'm making sure that it's got ingredients in it and at the back of this washing up liquid um, it says it's got limonene in it, spelled L-I-M-O-N-E-N-E. -E. That is um, a compound which will help to repel insects. So basically I'll, I'll pour it into my two liter sprayer, fill it up, I'll let the foam settle, uh, mix it up a bit, pump it up and spray it. And particularly on plum trees which have got a lot of sap, um, which can signify a place where infection can enter, that's fungal or bacterial. If you keep spraying, I spray every couple of weeks in winter, that's December, January, February. Um, and also you can spray any time of year with this type of spray, provided it's not when pollination occurs because once the flowers are there particularly clove oil might w and uh, lavender might repel insects so it's best for winter time so once your concoction of clove oil lavender oil and a squirt of detergent which has got limonene in, is in you'll need to pump up your spray bottle give it a good old pump i've done this a few pumps already okay and this you have to set the nozzle on a fine spray and then find the tree. The, this Today I'm going to have a go at some pear trees and also a plum tree that seems to be very oozy because bacterial infections can get in as well as fungi and of course there's canker to treat. This can spray very high up a tree and as I say I'm, I'm looking at this fortnightly over winter because fruit trees can get very oozy, infected easily and canker. Of course you, you can treat canker more uh, thoroughly if you watch um, Cumbrian Homestead's channel um, he'll show you basically the, the art of pruning it out and that's good. Here we have a typical grafted tree, it's a pear tree and you can see how the bark is split as I go up the tree. This stuff suffered from pear rust. Pear rust um, comes because it needs a host and it's got two and one's a juniper tree and then it comes to live on the leaves of your pear tree. It hit the UK in the last 10 years and it does reduce crop and you can see here you've got this canker here now some of these branches that's an internal branch need to be pruned out um, and other ones obviously I'm going to try the spray and see how it works but basically you can see with fruit trees they where the bark is split this is where you really need to be going in with the spray um, and here where you get lichen and moss and any fungus can get into it and the, and the bark splits easily Although it looks very damaged, I did get a little crop of pears off this, but obviously I'm looking at ways of, of treating the trees so that the pear rust will have less effect. Some people say not to pick the leaves off because obviously you need the leaves to make the sugars um, that go into the fruits get transferred across the plant um, through the xylem and the phloem translocation, I, I believe they call it. So you need leaves, so some people say not to pick off the infected leaves. So I'll, we'll have to see what, how people are going to cope with this disease because it seems to fit the UK very badly, Pear Rust. But anyway, the canker in this infection being treated today. So here we go, spraying away. If your spray nozzle gets blocked on your pressure sprayer, um, I recommend just using something like a safety pin or an ordinary little needle. And you can see from the nozzle here, I mean, if you're using oily sprays or anything that's got powder in and needs to dissolve, um, you can just put that in there and try and un unblock it because the spray pattern needs to be even. So basically I just take the nozzle off and as you can see there's a little hole at the front and make sure that you uh, scrape away any sort of anything that's blocking the little hole there and have a look along here where the spray comes out, the small part of here and also clean inside there um, and that should do the trick using, as I say, a needle or a safety pin. OK, so after I've unblocked it, put the nozzle back on, you can see now it's a much better, look at that, much better nice clear spray. And the idea is to get amongst the canker areas 
here and where the bark's split and the whole tree needs spraying right you know the whole tree if you can or if you can't reach all of the trees certainly there is a split that is split and you can always use ladders but be very careful if you do on fruit trees but I find this is a very good wash of course you can complement it with your oil which you can use which is vegetable oil winter oil wash um, as well but I just think this might help also with canker fungus and possibly even with pear rust but be very careful about using anything strongly scented around pollination time because you put off the insects from pollinating your trees so be careful about spraying around when you've got flowers and and the bees are around of course this spray concoction which um, I've uh, invented to be used can also be used on your soft fruits your black currants and your white currants and your red currants and once you've pruned them of course in the sort of crown of them where it's very woody um, you might want to actually give it a good old spray around you might even see that there's some fungus there growing um, and I think this would be effective and it certainly can be used throughout the winter again as I say before the pollinators are out just as a means of getting rid of fungus, bacterial infections and repelling insects. Of course another possibility is milk and bicarb which I've used in previous years um, which definitely does kill fungus. But if you look at this old gauge tree, uh, gauge plum tree, look at the bark splits here, this is where this, you really need to get this spray in and this spray can reach a good you know, 12-14 feet up and if you've got a ladder and it's safe you can even get up to as high as 20 feet above ground with this spray which is okay for me on these grafted trees and it splits areas where infection easily gets in that's where you need to spray and this is a, pol a pl pollinator of the gauge plum and again all the way down to the graft site you can see the bark split and this is where you really need to get the spray in so that's what I'm try trialling this year on fruit trees um, they're quite oozy, you can get sap coming out of fruit trees as well and that's where you need to get the spray in as well and also I've even seen um, fungi growing out on fruit trees this I do believe would kill fungi on the fruit trees I don't know if, if the fungi's actually got in and it's killing the tree, I'm not, sh not sure but it certainly would make your fruit edible that's the main thing, you want to have a spray which makes, makes it so the fruit is edible if you've got terrible can uh, canker and a branch is unstable you need to cut the branch off because it's dangerous but otherwise these sorts of areas here is where I'm going to be spraying with this canker just starting this is what I mean by the oozy sap you can get on fruit trees such as gauge trees um, you can see it here on this branch here and I've sprayed it so I'll need to come back in a couple of weeks time so I've got up until really sort of end of February really before the blossom comes out and where the bark split here and you also get local cats that run up trees can damage it but you need to spray now is the time to catch it early and on also make sure that on the graft site of the fruit trees for instance this plum tree here you can see how it's all split it's a really good coating of spray a dry day of course and I've, I haven't gotten the rainfall class for a while and that really helps this to soak in and hopefully it'll also kill some of the moss and help the tree and, and its immune system improve these are the fruiting branches of the plum tree and you might need to support them so I might get some stakes for this because last year there were quite a lot of plums along this long branch here and this tree hasn't been pruned properly for many years so I've started the pruning program it's very tall at the moment I'll let it go next year and then with my extendable loppers I'll take it down but because the trees aren't fru the trees are fruiting until it gets to a good sort of 12 feet above the ground I've got to make sure I keep some of the taller branches going and I do get a crop off it and then of course I'm going to feed it I've already given it liquid seaweed I'm giving that fortnightly about a quarter to a half a bucket of liquid seaweed diluted down I'm also going to feed it um, with some poultry pellets but I'm dissolving them in water because um, the tree it is quite hungry it does need feeding over winter if you want the plums so this is my go-to for poultry pellets um, I don't put pellets on the ground what I do with fruit trees I put a good couple of handfuls into my six litre watering can I leave it overnight um, or you can leave it for a few hours but either way it needs to break up the pellets and I've made it into like a slurry so basically once I've watered this down about halfway I'll top it up again with water because it settles give it a good stir, I'm just using an elder stick and give the trees a good, well I'd say each fruit tree a good quarter of this watering can um, you can feed them fortnightly over winter with this sort of feed and it really helps, so I've noticed this and the seaweed together over winter um, and thank you very much for
did well for this tip did well green fingers um, of making sure you seaweed as well as this and of course if you if you've got soil like I've got well it's not really soil it's clay soils I also use agricultural gypsum and you can also use lime as well as a as an improver but all good stuff because you're adding the correct minerals to the soil you're even getting some sulfur in there if you're using agricultural gypsum and some calcium um, you need all these things particularly potassium as well if you want fruit so with your watering can ready water around the roots they're quite shallow some of the fruit tree roots on grafted fruit trees but water around it you see like so and that's giving it a really good feed with the slurry half gone as you can see I need to top this up again with water put another three litres in stir it up again and keep going because it keeps settling but it's the best way I find it better than sprinkling pellets so to supplement your uh, seaweed liquid seaweed concentrate which you can dilute down I use a full in a capful up to six litres of water you can use these uh, poultry manure pellets and I'm using good ha two handfuls Cool, very generous two handfuls. I've got large hands into this uh, watering can here, as you can see. And then the idea is, I'll fill this with water. I'll leave this one overnight uh, so that the pellets break down. Keep stirring it with a stick. I'm using an old elder stick here. And as I say, just you know, a good a good quarter to a half of one of these is a good feed for a large fruit tree. Smaller ones need less, obviously. You probably only need a good a good old um, you know tip tip the bucket up for a few seconds around the roots and I do this fortnightly over winter together with the liquid seaweed feed uh, and that's December, January and February in the UK and then obviously that's me done for the feeding and I don't feed them again until the next winter and this is your typical treat which will benefit from the clove oil and lavender oil with a limonene which is washing up liquid with limonene um, you can see splits here there's a graft site down there but where it splits where creatures like cats scratch your tree or where basically just the bark splits and anywhere in this sort of where the branches sort of separate here um, as you're going up the tree here you're looking at areas where there are a bit of canker and I'm I pruned this last year and it's an old tree but so I'm not going to go mad on pruning it correctly yet but I'm opening up the canopy on it and the idea is the spray which I can put on fortnightly on a dry day see these branches cross here don't they so I need to take a branch out here but I, I won't do that this year I'll do it next year um, when the tree's recovered a bit and obviously this tree will then get the liquid feed I'll be using the chicken mule pellets liquid feed which I showed you how to do that and liquid seaweed some people do use blood fish and bone that's fine you can put that around the root area and I need to clear around this tree better this is a good time of year to also clean out nesting boxes so if you have any on the wall of your house I mean I've got some which blue tits used um, you can basically this one just has two little holes here where the screws go in and it's a little um, Phillips screwdriver you can see the screws uh, down there and inside I've removed the nest um, you can see there was, there was a few maggots in there as well I've used hutch cleaner and it wants cleaning out so I'll, I'll shake those maggots out but I've sprayed it with hutch cleaner overnight and that's to sort of kill off the mould and stuff like that and then the uh, blue tits hopefully come back and the idea behind this one is that the hole in the nesting box are too small for sparrows to get in because they will kill um, blue tits young but basically good time here for doing that as well as your gardening and there on the ground there you can see the old um, nest that they've made and it seems to have a lot of sort of uh, moss in it that they've collected um, seems to be their favourite thing then and obviously the moss uh, came to life again when they left the nest but I've put that back in the garden. My nesting box is secured by putting these um, roof galvanised roof nails there's one underneath there to rest that rests under that and one on the other side of there and inside there's a hole um, and basically I just put um, a galvanised roof nail into my bricks through a mortar place and it's secured there nice and uh, safe for the blue tits to get into so you probably need more than one the one hole in it isn't enough to make it stop it from swinging around you probably have to put a couple of nails either side these galvanized ones which have got a coating of uh, zinc on a sacrificial metal basically and you can even put little um, I'll put a couple of little nails underneath there which you can bend up just to secure it 
So this nesting box here, which is used by blue tits, is very close to a plum tree, and they like that. Um, I can put feeders on the plum trees, you can see there, and they can get in and out of the nest quickly, and because it's on a wall, predators can't get to it, and also um, sparrows can't fit through that little hole in the nesting box, and blue tits are even looking at the nest even now, um, eyeing it up as a potential one, so that's good. Well that's it for now, I hope that you um, enjoyed watching that, please like, comment and subscribe, until next time, bye for now from Mike.